What if the person you trust the most is actually a puppet master? Rishi Sunak, the UK's former chancellor, presents an image of financial expertise and stability. But behind this carefully crafted facade lies a network of power and influence. Sunak is not the self-made man he portrays himself to be. He is a product of a system designed to benefit the few at the expense of the many. Buckle up. The truth, as they say, is often stranger than fiction. Sunak's story is often presented as one of humble beginnings and hard work, but this narrative unravels quickly upon closer examination. Born into privilege, Sunak's path to power was paved with gold. His education at exclusive institutions provided him with access to the highest echelons of society. His marriage to Akshata Murthy, daughter of Indian billionaire N.R. Narayana Murthy, further cemented his status within the global elite. Sunak's rise to prominence is not a story of meritocracy, but rather a carefully orchestrated campaign backed by powerful interests. Rishi Sunak's image as a man of the people crumbles when we examine his family's sprawling financial empire. This is about inherited wealth, opaque business dealings, and connections that reach the highest levels of global power. Sunak's wife, Akshata Murthy, is the daughter of Indian billionaire N.R. Narayana Murthy, co-founder of Infosys. Her stake in the company alone is worth hundreds of millions of pounds. The Murthy family's wealth extends far beyond Infosys, raising serious questions about potential conflicts of interest. Can Sunak truly represent ordinary Britons when his own family's fortune is so closely intertwined with the global elite? Let's take a closer look at Infosys, the crown jewel in the Murthy family's financial empire. Founded in 1981, Infosys has grown into a multinational corporation with over 300,000 employees and annual revenues exceeding $16 billion. The company's success has made the Murthy family one of the wealthiest in India. In 2019, the company agreed to pay $12.5 million to settle allegations of visa fraud brought by the U.S. Department of Justice. In Sunak's case, his position as Chancellor of the Exchequer gave him significant influence over UK economic policy, including policies that could impact companies like Infosys. The true extent of Sunak's family wealth remains shrouded in secrecy. Much of their wealth is hidden in a complex web of offshore trusts and shell companies. These financial vehicles make it difficult to track the true flow of money. Investigative journalists and opposition politicians have raised concerns about the lack of transparency. Sunak insists he has always followed the law and that his wife's financial affairs are separate. However, this defense rings hollow. The public expects and deserves more than just technical compliance. The veil of secrecy surrounding Sunak's family wealth only fuels suspicions of impropriety. In 2021, it was revealed that Infosys, the company in which Sunak's wife holds a significant stake, had signed a billion-dollar deal with the British government while Sunak was serving as chancellor. The deal raised serious questions about potential conflicts of interest and preferential treatment. Sunak's defenders argued that he had no involvement in the deal and that it was awarded through a fair and transparent process. However, the optics were terrible. The fact that his wife's company benefited financially from a major government contract while he was in a position to potentially influence such decisions was deeply troubling. To address public outcry over his family's financial dealings, Sunak announced his wife would place her Infosys stake into a blind trust. Critics noted that blind trusts are not foolproof. Sunak also failed to declare his wife's non-domicile tax status in his official register of interest. Non-dom status allows avoiding UK tax on foreign earnings. The revelation of his wife's tax benefits while Sunak raised taxes for working families led to widespread condemnation. The blind trust and non-dom controversy deepened public skepticism. After graduating from Oxford, Rishi Sunak's path took him straight into the belly of the beast Goldman Sachs. This investment banking giant became Sunak's training ground. Here, he learned the art of financial engineering, of manipulating markets and exploiting loopholes, all while amassing a personal fortune. Goldman Sachs has a long history of shaping economic policy to benefit its own bottom line. Sunak's time at Goldman Sachs reveals his deep ties to a financial system that prioritizes short-term profits over long-term stability. Sunak's rapid ascent through the ranks of the Conservative Party was no accident. It was a carefully orchestrated campaign, backed by powerful interests. 
His background in finance and connections to the global elite made him the perfect candidate. He was presented as a fresh face, a break from the old guard. But beneath the polished veneer lay the same old story, a politician beholden to special interests. Sunak's rise should be a wake-up call for anyone who believes in democratic values. The COVID-19 pandemic provided the perfect cover for a massive power grab by governments and central banks, with Rishi Sunak at the forefront in the UK. Sunak implemented unprecedented economic policies that transferred trillions from public coffers to corporations and the wealthy elite. Lockdowns and restrictions devastated small businesses and threw millions into unemployment, while large corporations reaped record profits. Sunak's policies further enriched the already rich, leaving ordinary Britons to fend for themselves. The pandemic exposed the deep flaws in our economic system, rigged to benefit those at the top. As Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak held the keys to the UK Treasury. He had the power to set tax policy, allocate spending, and shape the British economy. And how did he use this power to benefit the wealthy elite? Sunak's policies were a masterclass in trickle-down economics. The discredited theory that cutting taxes for the rich will lead to economic growth for all. He slashed taxes for corporations and high earners while raising taxes on working families. Sunak's tenure as chancellor was a case study in using government levers to benefit the few at the expense of the many. While Rishi Sunak was preaching austerity, he and his family lived in extraordinary privilege and opulence. They owned multiple luxury homes, including a 7 million pound townhouse in Kensington and a 1,000 acre estate in Yorkshire. Their daughters attend private schools costing tens of thousands per year. They travel by private jet. They live in unimaginable wealth, far removed from everyday Britons struggling to make ends meet. While Sunak told nurses and teachers to tighten their belts, he lived like royalty. Cutting public services, he enjoyed the finest things in life. His hypocrisy is a slap in the face to struggling Britons. Sunak's lifestyle is a symptom of a deeper rot in our political system. Rishi Sunak's connections to the World Economic Forum are deeply troubling. The WEF, best known for its annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland, has become a lightning rod for conspiracy theories. Sunak is a WEF Young Global Leader alumnus. He has spoken at WEF events and is a regular attendee at Davos. His close ties to this organization raise serious questions about his allegiances. Is he truly working in the best interests of the British people? The WEF's agenda is often at odds with the interests of ordinary people. It champions globalization and technological innovation, often without regard for social consequences. It promotes policies that benefit large corporations and wealthy individuals. Sunak's embrace of the WEF's agenda is deeply concerning. It suggests he may be more interested in serving a global elite than his constituents. His involvement with the WEF is a red flag. Now let's talk about one of the most dangerous tools in the elite's arsenal central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. Rishi Sunak, a staunch advocate for this radical financial technology claims it's about modernization, about making our lives easier. Don't be fooled. This is about control. This is about creating a system where every penny you earn, spend, or save is tracked and controlled by the government. Imagine a world without cash. You can't buy a cup of coffee, pay your rent, or give a stranger a helping hand without every transaction being recorded and analyzed by unseen eyes. This isn't science fiction, it's the terrifying reality Sunak and his puppet masters are working tirelessly to implement. Remember the Panopticon, that prison design where a single guard could watch every inmate, even though the inmates couldn't see the guard? CBDCs are the financial equivalent of the Panopticon. They give governments and central banks unprecedented power to monitor, control, and even punish their citizens, all in the name of security and efficiency. This isn't about making our lives easier. It's about making us more controllable. It's about eliminating anonymity and dissent, about creating a society where every transaction, every interaction is subject to the whims of those in power. Wake up, Britain. The digital panopticon is being built around you, brick by digital brick. The push for a cashless society has been gaining momentum for years, fueled by the convenience of digital payments. But the true motive is to eliminate financial privacy and give governments and central banks absolute control over our money. When you use cash, your transactions are anonymous. You don't need to provide your ID or give up any personal information. 
But with digital payments, every transaction is tracked and recorded. Your spending habits, your location, your social network, it's all there for the taking. Imagine a world where cash is no longer an option, and every transaction must be conducted digitally through a central bank-controlled system. This is the world Rishi Sunak and his ilk are trying to create where financial privacy is a distant memory. But it's not just about privacy. A cashless society is inherently unequal. It excludes millions who don't have access to traditional banking services, smartphones, or high-speed internet. It creates a two-tiered system where those with access to technology thrive, while those without are left behind. One of the most alarming aspects of CBDCs is the concept of programmable money. Governments and central banks could program digital currencies to restrict how, where, and when they can be spent. Imagine your government deciding that you can't spend your money on certain goods or services they deem unhealthy or politically inconvenient. With programmable money they can simply switch off your spending power. This isn't about freedom, this is about control. Think about the implications. What happens when governments can dictate how you spend your own money? What happens when they can use your financial history against you, denying you access to essential goods and services based on your political views or spending habits? This is the Orwellian nightmare that CBDCs could unleash, a world where your money is no longer yours, but a tool of social control wielded by those in power. This is the future Rishi Sunak is so eager to embrace, a future where individual liberty is sacrificed on the altar of government control. Section 4. The Death of Privacy In a world of CBDCs, privacy as we know it ceases to exist. Every transaction, every purchase, every penny you earn or spend is tracked and recorded by the government. This data can then be used to create a detailed profile of your life, your habits, your political leanings. Imagine the implications. Governments could use this data to target you with propaganda, to manipulate your behavior, to silence dissent. They could deny you access to services, restrict your movements, even freeze your assets, all based on algorithms. This isn't just about the government knowing what kind of coffee you buy. This is about the erosion of fundamental freedoms, the right to privacy, the right to live your life without constant surveillance. This is the slippery slope we're heading down with CBCs. Once we surrender control of our money, we surrender control of our lives. We become digital serfs, beholden to the whims of our digital overlords, and Rishi Sunak is leading us down this dangerous path. Section 1. Whispers of Conspiracy We've laid bare the facts and connections of Rishi Sunak's policies, but the story doesn't end there. In the shadows, whispers of conspiracy swirl, weaving a narrative that is unsettling and difficult to ignore. Are these just the ramblings of fringe groups, or do they hold a grain of truth? The internet is awash with theories about Sunak's true motives and his role in a larger plan. From shadowy cabals like the Illuminati to the supposed machinations of the deep state, these theories tap into a fear that something is fundamentally wrong with the world. It's tempting to dismiss these theories, but to do so would be a mistake. These theories often contain a kernel of truth, reflecting real anxieties and frustrations. The rise of inequality, the erosion of privacy, the concentration of power, these are the defining realities of our time. And it is in this environment of fear and uncertainty that conspiracy theories thrive. Section 2. The Chinese Puzzle Box Conspiracy theories surround Rishi Sunak's ties to China. His wife, Akshata Murthy, is linked to Infosys, which deals with China. Theorists claim Sunak benefits China over the UK. They allege his support for CBDCs aids Chinese control. These claims persist without concrete evidence. China's rise fuels Western anxieties. Sunak's family ties to China feed these fears. He is portrayed as a Trojan horse with a hidden agenda. Conspiracy theories tap into our deepest fears. The conspiracy theories surrounding Rishi Sunak point to a larger truth a growing distrust of authority, a feeling that those in power are not acting in the best interests of the people they are supposed to serve. This distrust is not limited to Sunak or even to the UK, it is a global phenomenon, fueled by a sense that the system is rigged, that the people in charge are more interested in enriching themselves and consolidating their power than in addressing the needs of ordinary citizens. The threads of this distrust run deep. They are woven into the fabric of our institutions, from government and corporations to the media and academia. They are amplified by social media, 
where misinformation and disinformation spread like wildfire, eroding trust in traditional sources of information and creating a fertile breeding ground for conspiracy theories. This distrust is dangerous. It undermines our ability to address collective challenges, from climate change to economic inequality to global pandemics. It erodes social cohesion, pitting us against each other based on ideology and belief rather than shared values and common goals. It creates a climate of fear and suspicion, where truth becomes subjective and facts are malleable, open to interpretation and manipulation. In this environment, conspiracy theories flourish, offering simplistic explanations for complex problems and scapegoats for our collective anxieties. The Great Reset and the Fourth Industrial Revolution A conspiracy theory links the Great Reset to the World Economic Forum and its founder Klaus Schwab. It posits that global elites are using the COVID-19 pandemic to dismantle the existing world order. The Great Reset is about more than economic restructuring. It envisions a centralized, technologically driven world with surveillance and control. This theory incorporates the WEF's rhetoric about the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Conspiracy theorists see it as a dystopian future with AI surpassing human intelligence. Rishi Sunak is often portrayed as a key player in this supposed Great Reset. His policies, especially related to CBECs, are seen as evidence of a new world order. Section 5 Controlled Opposition Controlled opposition is the idea that dissenters are allowed to criticize those in power to give the illusion of freedom. Rishi Sunak, despite his reformer image, faces scrutiny. Some believe he is a figurehead deflecting criticism, with real decisions made by unelected elites. They argue his policies advance the global elite's agenda. These questions reflect deep-seated mistrust towards those in power. Section 1. The Unmasking We've journeyed deep into the world of Rishi Sunak, peeling back layer after layer of his carefully constructed persona. We've examined the threads of his family's wealth and the trajectory of his rise to power. What began as a glimpse behind the curtain has become a stark confrontation with a disturbing truth. Sunak, the supposed champion of the people, is revealed as a loyal servant to the very systems he claims to reform. His allegiance lies not with the struggling shopkeeper, the overworked nurse, or the family facing impossible choices. His loyalty is to the gilded cage of the global elite, a world of Davos whispers and billion-dollar handshakes. This isn't about party politics, it's about the soul of a nation. It's about the slow, insidious erosion of freedom, the replacement of genuine democracy with a technocratic illusion. We are being sold a digital utopia while sleepwalking into a digital dystopia where every transaction and interaction is tracked and controlled. The unmasking of Rishi Sunak is a wake-up call, a stark reminder that power, left unchecked, will always consolidate itself. The question is, will we allow it? Section 2. A Call to Action this isn't the time for apathy, for blind faith in a system that has shown its true colors. The unmasking of Rishi Sunak is a call to action, a demand for a different kind of future, one where power is decentralized, where transparency reigns, and where the voices of the many drown out the whispers of the few. We must resist the siren song of convenience, the false promises of a cashless society built on surveillance and control. We must educate ourselves about the dangers of central bank digital currencies and the chilling implications for our freedoms. Knowledge is power, and in this battle for the soul of our society, knowledge is our most potent weapon. This isn't just about protesting in the streets, although that is important. It's about demanding accountability from our elected officials, supporting organizations fighting for digital privacy and financial freedom, and having uncomfortable conversations with our friends and families. It's about reclaiming the narrative, exposing the lies and manipulations of those who seek to control us. The future is not set in stone. The dystopian vision being crafted by Rishi Sunak and his ilk is not inevitable. But we must act, and we must act now. The time for complacency is over. The time for resistance is now. The future of our freedom depends on it.